Well, hello, friends. Today is Sunday, July 24. I'm in Hartford, Connecticut, a long way from home. I'm actually on my way to Maine right now to uh, take care of some family business. And I am stopped at the First Church of Christ in Hartford, Connecticut. This is the location of the ancient burying ground, which we're going to visit shortly. If you look behind me, 1633, 1647, that's when their first pastor was here. Um, this, this building here was built in 1807, and it is the fourth building on this location, as far as I can tell, everything I've read. The, uh, the church congregation was founded in 1636, so they have been here a very long time. And we are going to take a walk through their graveyard attached to the church here, take a good look. There's a lot of history right here, right here in this yard that I'm in, but also right here in this area. Before I walk into the cemetery, I'm going to stop at the corner of this building and do a little quick spin around so you can see what I'm looking at out in front of me. All right. So here we go. Let's enjoy this, this visit at the First Church of Christ and the Ancient Burying Ground, Hartford, Connecticut. So this is where I am today, where I'm standing, right here on Gold and Main Streets in Hartford, Connecticut. Take a look up here. Let me actually walk down the steps of the church, turn around so you can see the church here. All right, so this is where I am right now. Take a look up, you can see the belfry of the church there. We are going to walk down here. This is the First Church of Christ, Hartford, Connecticut. The building was built in 1807. A lot of very, very old graves in here. Let's see what this says. So the graveyard associated with the church was originally much larger than the current 1.3 acres that it is. But development in the city of Hartford shrunk the burial area multiple times over the years. The oldest surviving headstone in here dates to 1648. 1648. It's the body of Timothy Stanley. I have no idea where he is buried, but we're going to try to find him. But look at some of these stones. Look at this. Here lies the body of M. Can't read that name. Nisha Mashfield died 1712, age 47 years. I'm just going to keep looking here. 1762, 1763. The body of Nathaniel Willett is also in here, and he was a member of the jury that found a husband and wife guilty of witchcraft, the witchcraft trials here in Hartford, Connecticut. Look at these, the, the way these are carved. Died September 1777 and is completely readable. And look at this. Elizabeth Watt 
Watson, wife of Ebenezer Watson, departed this life April 1778. These carvings are amazing. Here lies the body of Susanna Waltertown, who died in the year 1662. Completely readable. Amazing, amazing. Nice tabletop grave here. There are little signs poking up all over the place. Jonathan Gilbert, let's see. One of the first customs collectors and a representative in the General Assembly. These are pointing out people of note in the cemetery here. That looks like a Revolutionary War soldier, Benjamin Payne. Seventeen seventy three. Seventeen forty one. Look at this. We're just going to take a walk around. This is 1694 right there. Here lies the body of Captain George Dennison, departed October the 23rd and the 74th of his age, 1694. Wow, just look at this. Read one of these tabletops here if I can. Here lies the interred body of the Honorable Nathaniel Stanley, Esquire of Hartford, who was for several years one of the members of the Council of the Colony of Connecticut and treasurer of said colony, who departed this life August 17th, AD 1755, in the 73rd year of his age. Still looking for Timothy Stanley, too. I have no idea where he would be in here. But that would be the oldest stone dating to 1648. An extremely well, good condition, I should say. The body of Nathaniel Willett is also buried here. He was in the jury that convicted a husband and wife of witchcraft. Here we go, right there, look at that. Here lieth the body of Timothy Stanley who departed this life April 1648, age 45. That is the oldest stone in this place, right there. Completely readable. And I believe that is original, as are most of these in here.
carver of these stones, I believe his name is known. I, I read it uh, yesterday online, but I can't remember what it was right now. But uh, the family that carved these stones, I should say, <clears throat> they uh, really knew what they were doing. These stones are, you know, hundreds of years old, completely readable. 1702. Look at that, here lies the body of Mrs. Mary Lord, alias Hooker, who died May 17, 1702, age 58 years, and Richard Lord Esquire, who died, looks like Jen, January 29, 1711, age 42 years. Also, the body of Mrs. Abigail Woodbridge, Woodbridge, relict of Richard Lord Esquire, Relic, by the way, that's a word for wife. And of the Reverend Timothy Woodbridge of Hartford, who died January 1754 in the 77th year of her age. So these are in awesome, awesome shape. Seventeen seventy-seven, Alicia Skinner. No, I'm sorry, Abigail Skinner, wife of Alicia, Elisha Skinner, aged 19 years. Very young wife. These stones are amazing. So used to being able to barely read stones in the area near where I live in Virginia. Some of them you struggle a lot just to be able to read a name or scratch a date from them. These, one after another after another, they're just unbelievable. Look at this. You can read every one of these, most of them. Eighteen oh one in the thirty sixth year of his age. Captain Samuel Marsh, who died September eighteen oh two. That would be his wife, who died seventeen ninety seven. Daughter of Captain Samuel Marsh, departed this life. 1800, age 32 years. Seventeen ninety-five. What do we have here? Tabletop. Reverend Benjamin Boardman. Died February 8, 1802. are absolutely amazing. Wonder who's back there in that underneath that big memorial there. We're going to go see it in just a minute. Died 1786. That one's beginning to get hard to read. Memory of John Sargent, son of Mr. Jacob and Mrs. Oliver Sargent, who was unfortunately drowned while bathing in the Connecticut River. July 23, 1802, aged 11 years.
Captain Caleb Bull died 1789, age 72. Let's see. Have another tabletop here. Let's see if we can read this one. John Marshall Holcomb, born June 1848, died January 1926. His wife's Emily Seymour Goodwin Holcomb, born 1852, died 1923. Their daughter, Emily Margaret Holcomb, born 1877, died 1926, the same year as her dad. Actually, it looks like she died just a few weeks after her dad. can say I have never seen a cemetery with so many old, old, old stones that are so incredibly readable. But I'm not from the Northeast either, and I understand there's a lot of them like this up here. I've seen lots of pictures on Instagram, people that live up in this area. Here's one from 1683 right there. Miss Hannah Wells, aged 50 years died August 1683. Right up close to the church building here, we have these. These look like they're sinking into the ground a bit. Another 1683 right there. these. John Bradley died on his passage from the West Indies on the 8th of September 1802, aged 19 years. In memory of Captain Joseph Watson, who was drowned, drowned, interesting word, in Connecticut River on the 15th of May 1803, in the 29th year of his age. Another drowned in Connecticut River on the 15th of May 1803. Ah, John Foote and Captain Joseph Watson died the same day. Memory of Mr. Ashbel Steele, who departed this life July 8, 1790, in the 59th year of his age. What is this one? Look at this. This is interesting. I wonder if this was repaired. Two different colors of stone here, two different kinds. To the memory. There are some abbreviations here. 1803. Interesting. I think this was repaired at some point in its life.
just a little, a little tabletop. Here lies the body of Mary Caldwell, the daughter of Mr. John and Mrs. Hannah Caldwell, who died September 15, 1736, aged two years, two months. Also, here lies the body of Alan, the son of Mr. Neal and Mrs. Hannah McLean, who died September 19, 1741, in the fourth year of his age. Interesting tabletop here. This one looks like it's got metal plates, engraved metal plates in it. Seventeen sixty-four and five, and here lies the body of Daniel Lord, son of the mom and dad up there at the top. Died September sixteen sixty seventeen sixty-two. another one over here that had the, uh, the multiple colors of stone in it. Right here. Memory of Mrs. Margaret Caldwell, who, wife of John Caldwell, who died March 1799, aged 10. No, I can't. It can't be 10 if she was a wife. I just can't read the number. James, son of John and Margaret Caldwell, died October 5, 1801, aged three years. I just saw this one. Look at how well you can read this one. In memory. Richard Risley, born in England, emigrated to America in ship Griffin with Thomas Hooker, 1633, settled in Hartford, 1636, and died 1648, erected by descendants 1936. So that's a lot newer. But they did it kind of in the same style as many of these others. Here you have, let me go, just do a quick turnaround here. This is the ancient burial ground, burying ground, Hartford, Connecticut, where I am today, Sunday, July 24, 2022. This place is really cool. If you're ever in town, please come visit it. I understand there was five to 6,000 people buried in here over the last 400 years. Uh, I can believe that, because it was, of course, it was a lot bigger, and at some point there were graves where the church is, where these other buildings are that are around it. There were graves out there in those areas. So there you have it. The ancient burying ground at Hartford, Connecticut attached to the first Church of Christ. Till the next video, y'all have a good day.